we can add a few things in here to make it look more appealing and eye-catching. So the first thing that we can do is we can add in our logo, our brand logo. So we're going to head over to another tab of paint. And as you can see, I have opened the casual e-commerce logo. And we're going to resize it and make it a lot smaller. Sometimes you have to play around with the sizes. And we'll go to select. And we'll select the part. And then we're control C to copy it. Come back to the owl. Control V to paste it right in here. And then we can put this logo in anywhere we want in the picture. So I'll put it right here. Click off. And as you can already see, this already looks a little bit better because now we have some brand impact on the picture as well. So the logo is the most common thing that a lot of people put on here. And obviously a logo that has to do with your store is going to look better than my random logo. But this is just for example, just insert whatever logo you have for your store. So another thing we can do to visually customize our ad is add some text, preferably at the bottom or at the top, that just says something like a call to action, like not like to buy or anything, but just something like share with your friends. And this is too big, so we're going to have to make it smaller. So something simple like that, share with your friends, so this will entice people to tag their friends down in the comment section below, which will add not only more leads to your ad, but more social proof to your ad. So something as simple as that is, you know, it took me two seconds to do here in paint, and it could easily lead you to more sales. And this is just one format of customization you can set up. There's a lot of other things you can throw on here, and I'll actually show you something else that you can throw on to visually customize your ads. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the blank template of the owl picture, and we're going to start. Alright, so we're back at the blank template of the owl picture, and now I'm going to show you something else that you can throw on here to visually entice people. We're going to head back to the other tab, and now I'm going to open a different picture. I'm going to use this special offer banner right here to throw into the ad. And you can get these right off of Google Images. You just Google search special offer. That's how I found it. And you can just select, copy, and paste it and bring it right over here. Throw it in the corner. And you can see once you do that, it looks like it was in the picture originally. And it's just as easy as saving the picture from Google and opening it up in another paint tab, resizing it to make it small enough, and copying it and pasting it right over here. Now you can see there's still room here if you wanted to put your logo or maybe just the name of your business, or if you want to put share with friends again at the bottom. This is just one thing you can put here, and there's so many other things you can put on here as well, like, like if you're doing uh, tripwire offers and things of that sort you can throw in a free badge or a free tag so we'll make this free badge smaller I'll copy and paste it over here and show that you can just throw this right on any ad you would like throw that in there and I wouldn't overload it with stuff like two of these is probably too much I would either do the free badge or do the special offer and the free badge would actually probably look better up here but doing the special offer with your logo and like share with friends I don't think that's overdoing it but if you have two like free badges or two special offers that's probably overkill you you don't want your ad to look too overloaded and take too much attention off of the actual product itself you just want something on here to make people take a second look at your ad because the people your ad is going to be showing up for are targeted people so you just have to make sure that they're seeing it and that they don't scroll past it so throwing little things on here like this can increase views increase retention and eventually lead to increase in sales especially throwing in share with friends or tag your friends on the picture 
because that will increase, uh, that will get you extra leads, and that will also increase the social proof of your ad. So that's it for this section. Pretty short section, easy to apply, but it's definitely really important. And I'll see you guys in the next section of the course. All right, so this section is going to be on optimizing your ad text. So real quick, I'm going to run through these bullet points with you and give you a brief summary. And then we're going to head over to Facebook and I'm going to show you how you can put these bullet points into action right away. So the first thing is to make sure your text is short and to the point. Nobody goes on Facebook and wants to see ads in the first place most of the time. So when they do see an ad, nobody wants to read a novel. So you want to make it short, eye-catching, and to the point, as direct as possible. You don't want to put any meaningless fluff in there. We're not trying to write articles for SEO. We're trying to sell products. So try and make your ad text as direct and to the point as possible. And the second thing is don't yell. I mean, this may seem obvious, but I've seen ads where people just scream in all caps the entire time. If you want to make one or two words caps, or maybe even like a short sentence, maybe two, three word sentence caps, that's fine. You can get away with that. But also, nobody wants to go on and see an ad where it's just you're being blasted with this this, this screaming and if you don't know, when you type in all caps, it's considered yelling on the computer. So no one wants to be blasted with that type of stuff, and it really turns people off. So the third thing is to always stress some type of urgency somewhere in your ad text. Now, whether you're saying that this deal ends in a week, or by now there's only a 100 left, you want to stress some type of urgency to get the person to realize, okay, I need to get in now, because if I don't, I'm going to miss out or I need to buy this now because if I don't they're going to be gone. So you need to stress some type of urgency even if it's not necessarily real you need to do it because that gets people to act now not later. Because if they don't act now they're most likely not going to act at all. So the next thing is to have a call to action on your ad text. Or even better yet, have multiple calls to action. There's actually an option in Facebook ads where you can add a call to action, and I suggest using that. And I also suggest putting a call to action within your text. In my eyes, you can't really have too many calls to action. I mean, hypothetically, of course, if you sit there and put 50 links to your site, that's overboard. But having one to two call to actions, maybe even three, that's not going to be too overkill as long as you make it look good. And the next thing, this doesn't have to do with the ad text, but you do select this in the same section of Ads Manager where you are optimizing. So this is where you get to pick where you want your ads to be shown up. And I've found that the most effective places to have your ads is the desktop news feed, the mobile news feed, and Instagram. I haven't had much success with audience network or the right column of or the right column of the desktop but obviously feel free to experiment with this and if you are seeing results from these please let me know maybe I just wasn't optimized correctly for them but with these three um, this is where I see my most consistent results so we're going to head over to my Facebook ads manager and I'm going to show you how you can put some of these tips into action right away. Alright, so we're over here at my ads manager and I'm logged into the casual e-commerce Facebook page and I just inserted the casual e-commerce logo for the ad logo. Just to throw something in there and I'm linking to the ever so notable sample test store 123. So let's get right into it. So first off comes the headline, and the headline is what shows up right here. So for the headline, you don't need to put anything crazy, just put what your product is. So let's say for this example, since I got the casual e-commerce logo up, let's say I'm selling a casual e-commerce t-shirt. So I would literally just put casual e-commerce 
t-shirt. And then we'll give it a second to load. You don't want to do anything too crazy with the headline. You just want to tell people what your item is. That's it. Nothing crazy. Now where you do want to put some creative stuff in is down here at the text. Because whatever you type in here is what's going to show up up here. So as you can see if I just throw some random letters in. That's going to show up right here. So this is where you want to put all those tips I was giving you into action. So if you head back over here, you want it to be short and to the point. You don't want to yell. You want to stress urgency. And you want to have a call to action. So how can we use this as an example for a casual e-commerce t-shirt? So we could type in something like this. Let's say I'm having a 50% off sale. So I would go 50% off this casual e-commerce t-shirt this week only and I'll put only in caps so as you can see right here I'm stressing urgency by by saying this sale will only last this week if you don't get it this week prices go back up and you're screwed so so keep in mind you can do this with any type of ads you want whether it's a 50% off sale ad, whether it's a tripwire offer where you're going, this item is free until next month. We're having a blowout sale on this item, giving them away for free this week only. Just stress some type of urgency in there. So we've got this. We've got the stress of urgency that's short, direct, to the point. We're not yelling. So now we need to throw in a call to action. So what I'm going to do is even though you can click here and go there, I'm going to throw in another one, and I'm going to say, click here, to check them out. And I don't want to have a really long, obnoxious link here that's going to look stupid. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up a tab, and if you haven't been heard of this, I'm going to go to Bitly, which all Bitly does is it, is it just shortens your URLs and makes them look cleaner. So I'm going to go ahead and paste in a link, copy it, come back to the Ads Manager, and paste it right in here. And as a heads up, sometimes the Facebook will notify you and say that this is longer than suggested. But the guidelines that I like to go off of is I don't like it to go beyond two lines. So we have another half a line to use and I'm going to show you what you can put in here next. So what I'm, what I like to put in here at the end is another call to action. And this works really, this is probably the most effective call to action you can put in here honestly and it's the same one that we put on the photo for the visual ad optimization section earlier so we were going to put here tag a friend if I can spell who would like this Now what this is doing, and I forgot the D. Now what this is doing is this is not only a another call to action, but it's also going to add social proof to our ad. This is one of the best things you can put on your ad because you want to get a lot of comments, likes, and shares on your ad even though you're not optimizing for that. It helps because it adds social proof to the ad. And the more social proof you have, the more likely you are to generate sales. And as your social proof on this specific ad just keeps growing and growing, it's kind of like a snowball effect. Your ad's only going to get more and more effective. 
as it gets more and more social proof. So this is a pretty optimal looking text right here. You we got your two calls to action. It's short and to the point. We're not yelling. We're stressing urgency. It's this week only. And what you just need to do is copy and paste this exact formula into whatever ads you're running. Even if you're not running a sale, you can still stress urgency just, just by saying that get this product now before it's out of stock. Even if you have plenty of stock, you can just say some, you can still say something like that and just to stress the urgency because you want people to just go to your site immediately. And even if they don't buy right away, you just want to get these clicks so that way you can at least capture their email address. And now, if you go down here, you can also see this call to action button is optional. I have no idea why you wouldn't use it. So what I like to use is just the shop now button if I'm selling a product. And as you can see, the shop now button will show up right here. So you really have like three to four calls of action here you have shop now they can click this and preferably you will have some type of share with your friends tag your friends something on here it won't just be a blank picture of your logo it'll be one of the pictures that we designed in an earlier section preferably and then you have this call to action which is the same exact link as these two it's just another way they can get to it and you can see how this looks very neat very organized all of the ingredients necessary to have a successful ad. Now obviously you're going to have to experiment with things like this and tinker it a little bit, but this is a basic blueprint that you can essentially copy and paste into any ad and follow it. As I said, whether it's a tripwire and you're giving away stuff for free, whether it's just a normal product, whether you're having a sale, you can pretty much do this same formula for any type of ad. And as I said, don't worry about this right here, how it tells you it's too long. It's hard to fit an effective pitch in just their amount of text. Just keep it to two lines right here. Don't go beyond two lines. As I said, you don't want to, you're not, we're not trying to uh, write them a novel here. People, we're, we're looking for buyers of our products. We're not looking for people to come to Barnes and Noble with us. So, so that wraps up this section for modifying ad text. And then, oh yeah, as I said, um, I like the desktop news feed, the mobile news feed, and Instagram. I don't like the desktop right column, and I don't like the audience network, so I usually remove those. But as I said, I'm always open to experimentation. I just personally haven't had any success with those, but you might. Maybe you figure out um, something that I haven't, and you figure out a way to make those successful. And if you do, that'd be great, because I'm sure they're here for a reason. They have to be working for some people they just haven't been successful for me or anyone else I know that has a Shopify store. So I hope this section has helped and I hope that you have an understanding of how to optimize your ad text. Like most of the sections this is pretty simple it's just it's these tiny things that make a difference between a good ad and a bad ad. Like some people have ads and they don't even have like any calls to action they're not asking for comments or tags or shares and all you're doing is missing out on free extra leads and extra social proof for your ads so there's no reason not to do any of this it's a simple formula here the simple four steps to follow for every ad that can be copy and pasted into any ad type that you like so i'll see you in the next section of the course Alright, hello and welcome to probably what is the most important section of this course. In this section, I'm going to be going over how to use Facebook Audience Insights to create and target your specific audience. So before we head over to Facebook, I'm going to go through a few points with you real quick. So the thing you need to understand is that this is the biggest and most crucial thing that you need to learn from this course if you want to see success with your business because it doesn't matter how good your product is, how good your ad is, if you're trying to sell, let's say, a Donald Trump t-shirt to people that hate him, or people that don't even care about politics or business or something like that. So, so targeting is the most crucial part of everything. So this will be 
the longest section of this video. There are many strategies you can use for Facebook ad targeting. There, there's countless strategies, but I'm going to be showing you my specific one. And you can always feel free to add, add additions to it, make tweaks to it, uh, put your own little twist on it. I'm just trying to give you a general blueprint of something that you can go off of and use and tweak and hopefully improve on in the future. And it's important to understand that getting this right is a process and it takes a lot of tweaking. Most likely you're not going to get everything correct the first time. You're not going to have a all-star ad right away. I mean that's possible, but most likely you're not going to. This is a process. It's, there's a learning curve and it takes tweaking. Even for me, even for other people, even for other successful Shopify sellers, it's always a process and it always takes continual learning and continual tweaking to your ads and to your audience. And another thing to remember is that every new project is usually going to start kind of slow. And by slow, I don't mean it's going to take weeks or months to profit. I just mean that your ads might not be converting at the rate you would like right away without doing some type of tweaking or optimizing or narrowing of your audiences and things like that. So the main thing to remember is that persistence and tracking is key. You'll never find what the perfect ad formula and the perfect audience is for your niche or for your item if you quit. So persistence is key and then keeping track is key as well because you don't want to be like the fly that's stuck inside the house that keeps trying to get out but keeps banging his head into the glass window not realizing that the window's open he just has to look a little lower and find a different way through. So you need to track what you're doing so that way you can see what's working, what's not, cut out what's not, improve on what's working, and go from there. So now we're going to head over to Facebook and we're going to go to Audience Insights and I'm going to have a tab open for ads as well. And I'm going to go through the process that I use for Facebook ad targeting. And also I'll be opening up an Excel sheet to track some of the ad audiences and things like that because I'm kind of OCD, I like to track everything. You don't have to track this in depth if you don't want, but I would recommend it. You can never really be too organized. So I'll see you over at Facebook. All right, so we're actually over here at AliExpress. I'm just going to show you the item that I'm going to be creating an ad for real quick. So. If you purchased this course, you most likely got my niche list I sent you, and you'll see that the fitness gloves are on, you'll see that fitness gloves are on the list of hot selling items, so we're just going to use this as an example, fitness gloves, so I'll close this out now. I just wanted to show what audience we're going to be targeting. So we're going to head over to Facebook Audience Insights, and the first thing I like to do is just type in something really broad just so I can find some pages that we can target. So considering we're doing fitness gloves, I'm looking for people that are active, that are into their health and things like that. So I'm just going to go in interest and just type in physical fitness and see what happens. So you can see on here there's 50 to 60 million people active every month that are interested in physical fitness. Now that's great, we have a massive audience, but this is way too big to target. We don't just wanna stop here and target this. So what I like to do, now as I said, there are many different strategies that people do. This is just the one I like to do. I like to head over to page likes. And these right here are the top 10 pages that people in this group of people like. So these would all be, if you look at these pages here, you can see Vitamin Shop, that probably has to do with vitamins, Bodybuilding.com, GNC Live Well, Body Rock TV, uh, athletes like Ronda Rousey, um, this is a page called Eat to Perform, Quest Nutrition, Public Figures, I'm sure these people are into fitness, uh, let's just open one up and check real quick. So yeah, as you can see, this lady is 
a model and she's a she says she's a health and fitness expert and I mean she looks like she's pretty good in that department obviously so you look at her page you can see that people that like her page are most likely into health and fitness so this is a possible page to target now I personally prefer to target more so not people pages but like like group style pages or things like bodybuilding.com or vitamin shop style pages that are like products and things like that because they're usually more interested in buying and there's not people that just like say like Ronda Rousey but aren't into fitness and stuff like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the number one page here, Eat to Perform. And we're going to see what shows up here. So as you can see, almost 1.5 million people like this page. It is a page about personal coaching for physical fitness. Let's scroll down here. Yep, how to manipulate body composition. Rest to build lean mass. What to eat if you want six packs abs. So this is a page that no one would really like this page if they're not actively in the fitness. So this is probably a better page than like a person page, like a fan page for a person. So I'm going to go ahead and set up an ad campaign targeting this page. So what I would do is I'd come back over here. So what I'll do is I'll come back over here and I'm going to type in eat to perform. If I can spell. And then I'm going to get rid of physical fitness. And now I'm going to see the audience is 1 to 1.5 million just like it said on the page. It had like 1.3 million likes. So I'm going to head back to demographics and I'm going to see that 68% of women like this page and 32% of men like this page. And you can see that the age group is primarily between 25 to 44. So judging by this, I'm not going to target anybody that's 55 and over. And I'm probably not going to target anyone that's 24 and under either. I'm probably going to stick between 25 and maybe 50. Maybe I'll take half of this group right here. So 25 to 50 and it's predominantly women. And I'm going to go off and completely target women with this particular campaign. So what I would do is I would head over here to the ad. And I'm just going to switch over to women. And you can see the ages that I'm looking to target are between 25 and I said 50. And since I'm going to make five ads, that's five. If you do 25 divided by five, that's five. So every ad, I'm going to target a five year difference. So I'm going to start at 25. And then I would go to 29. Oh, this must have been in here from earlier. Let me take this out. Bodybuilding.com. And first off, what I'm going to do is type in physical fitness again over here because I want to get really targeted people. So I want people that like physical fitness. And then let me X this out so I can show you what it should say right here. Now you can see that it says narrow audience. So what I want to do is physical fitness. I'm always going to put the broad one here because I just want to make sure these people are as targeted as possible. So then I'm going to get a narrow audience. And then I'm going to add in the page we want to target. So E to perform. And now you can see that my age is 25 to 29 women. And I'm targeting about 91,000 people. So this is a pretty targeted ad, but it also has room for scaling up for a while. So what I would do is I'd settle on this audience and I'd head over here to an Excel sheet. So add one, the size is 91K. 
the gender we're targeting is women. Ages are 25 to 29. And the interest is we'll go PF for physical fitness and then eat to perform. So now for add to, what we would do is we would just do the same thing as I said, how I want to go from 25 to 50. So if we're doing women 25 to 29, the next ad is going to target women from 30 to 34. And you can see this group of people is a little bigger here, 140,000. And that's probably because we're right in here. We're right in the meat here. So that's probably why this group is a little bit bigger. And that's fine. That's still a really small targeted group. So this would be what I would use for ad number two. So I look at my audience size. Put it in, 140K. We're doing women again. And then we're doing 30 to 34 and then all of this is the same eat to perform so I think you kind of get the picture here of where, where I'm going with this specific ad campaign I'm going to continue to scale this up from age so the next age group is going to be 35 to 39 and then I'll do 40 to 44 and then the fifth ad I'll do 50 no 45 to 50 and I'll be targeting women each time and then the interest in pages would be exactly the same so what I'm gonna do real quick is I'm gonna get the audience sizes for all these I'm gonna fill it out and then I'll be back to explain what we would be doing next or what I would personally do next if I was advertising this specific niche all right so we're back and I have went ahead and filled out the audience size for what these ads would have been so it's another 140k 100k and 76k so you can see in here from 30 to 44 is the meat of our age group so if I had to guess these are probably the highest potential ads that we can scale but sometimes you never know so because you want to keep these in here as well and just see what happens because you never really know what age group is going to take off. So you may be saying, all right, so we're selling fitness gloves and you've only targeted women. Exactly. That's why I just set up ad campaign two here. So these ads would each be $5 ads for me. And then I'm going to set up ad campaign two that would be $5 ads. And just a heads up, this could either be, this can be a tripwire offer or this could just be a just a regular offer no sale or it can be a 50% off sale it can be whatever type of ad you want whether you're just selling your item at regular price or you're doing a tripwire whatever you want to do this is just how you could set up targeting for it so audience one would be we'd be targeting our women and now this can change for every niche but with this niche it just so happens that targeting women for this page was optimal because 68% of women were the people that liked that page but we don't want to leave men out either because it's a, when it comes to physical fitness, it's about a 50-50 ratio. So what we're going to do is head back over here, go to Audience Insights, and we're going to go back, we're going to clear everything out, and we're going to type in physical fitness again. And this time we're going to try and go after a page that we can target men in. So we're going to go to Page Likes again. And when you look at these, bodybuilding.com, I personally know what that site is. I've actually been on it a few times for tips and stuff. So I know that this is a site that primarily targets men. Now we can open up and check this out. So as you can see, almost 3 million people like this page. So this would be another good page to target when it comes to people who like fitness. You can see everything they have here is just about working out. And you can see they have some fitness equipment right here. So these people are going to be perfect for this. 
But what we're hoping for with this is that the percentage of men to women is in the favor of men, so that way we can have an entire ad campaign based off of um, targeting men. So we're going to head back to demographics. And then now I'm going to take off physical fitness, and I'm going to just put in bodybuilding.com. And let's see what our gender looks like. Alright, so this is perfect. So 75% of men is who likes bodybuilding.com on Facebook, and then 25% women. So this is an optimal setup right here. And you can see that the ages are a little bit different here. So I'm going to cut out all of this from 45 and up. So now, for this ad, I'm going to target from 18 to 44. So if we do some quick math real quick, yes, I have to pull out a calculator for this. 44 minus 8, so 26. So we're pretty, we're just going to go by five-year intervals again. But this time we're going to start at the age of 18 and we're going to target men. So what we would do is the same thing. We'd head back over to Ads Manager here. We'd keep physical fitness up, but we're going to get rid of Eat to Perform. Sorry, my computer goes slow sometimes when my screen recording software is active. So we're back here at the Ads Manager, and we're going to keep physical fitness up. We're going to switch this to Women. Or we're going to switch this to men, I should say. We're going to narrow our audience. And now we're going to put in that same page we found. So bodybuilding.com. And the ages we wanted to target are from 18 to 44. So our first ad is going to be 18. And we're just going to go by intervals of 5 again. So 18 to 23. So as you can see, this is a very big audience we have right here. 18 to 23, physical fitness and bodybuilding.com is 880,000 people. So if we can get an ad to catch on in this specific audience group right here, we can scale it to the moon pretty much. There's a huge... Um, there's a huge margin of people we can scale into. Now, sometimes, if this gets over a million, I would narrow it further again. But this is, I mean, this is kind of on the big side, but considering we're still very targeted, these people are very, considering these people are very targeted, this, this should be all right. So what we're going to do is we're going to head back over here. So we're going to put in 880K, and then gender of men, and then these, this is age 18 to 23. And then the pages and interests are physical fitness and bodybuilding.com. Alright, so I'm assuming you get the idea. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and fill the rest of this out so you can see what this will look like complete. And I'll be back in a couple of minutes. Alright, so we're back, and I have finished filling out the audience sizes for the second ad campaign. So as you can see, ad 2 was 1 million, and then 3 was 470k, 4 was 290k, and 5 was 160k. So these audiences are a little bit bigger than our women's audiences, which isn't necessarily good or bad. These are all okay sizes. We'll see. It just all comes down to how the ads perform from here. So this is a pretty basic setup that I would commonly use for a niche like this where I can target both women and men in different age groups and I would scale up accordingly. So what I would be doing here is I'd run a $5 ad on each one of these and I'd let them run for two days as I say in my YouTube videos. So this would be about, let's see, $50 a day. So it would be $100 worth of ads in two days, which isn't which isn't that much, but it, it kind of it depends on your situation. So, I'd run these to test them out. I'd come back and I'd see how they're performing, whether it's tripwire, whether it's regular sales. I'd still try and cut out ones that aren't performing, and I'd try and boost ones that are. But I would try and tweak these a little bit here. And on certain ones like these where the audience is 1 million, sometimes I'll try and narrow it even lower. Like, say if this ad 
is doing pretty well. You could also, like, for example, if these two ads right here were the only ones doing well, what you could do is you could actually split it into four ads. You could do like 24 to 27, then 27 to 30, 31 to 32, or 31 to 33. You could split these into different ads if you find that these are the only age groups that are working effectively. So this is a sort of advanced strategy for targeting with ads, where you're targeting by gender and age group. And I like to keep track of everything in an Excel sheet because I like to stay organized. And I can come back here and I can put a section in here that's like CPC, what's my calls per click. I can put in here how many conversions I have. And I can just keep track of that all right here in an Excel sheet. So I would recommend doing this, but you don't have to. It's not 100% necessary. So next I'm going to show you an example of how you can target with the broad to narrow strategy that I have also mentioned in the YouTube videos. So sit tight and we'll be right back in a second. Alright, so I hope that live example was helpful to you and I hope it opened up your eyes to some strategy that you can use when targeting people on Facebook. Now you can use that same strategy throughout any niche for any product. Obviously you have to tweak it a little for the niche and you'll have to switch a few things around but the main strategy lies in there in the same and there's a slight variation to the strategy that I will mention that you can do where you can go from a broad audience in the beginning on your first ad to a narrow audience and quickly how to do that what you would do is you could just you, if you head back over here to ads manager you can see just say I have this set up 18 to 44 with men physical fitness and bodybuilding.com let's say I wanted to create narrow ads I could narrow further and a strategy to do that is you could head back to audience insights and you can see we're looking at just interest of bodybuilding.com and we can see other page likes they like so we'll find a good one here We'll go with fitness and power and we'll open this up. And you can see a million people like this page. So it's a little less than bodybuilding.com. But what we can do is we're going to keep the bodybuilding.com interest. We're going to narrow further to the fitness and power page as well. And you can see that takes our audience down from 2.8 million to just 88,000. So that's just one way that we can narrow our audience down is by having them like additional pages. So the only people in this audience, they, so they like physical fitness and they like the bodybuilding.com page and they like the fitness and power page. So these people are really targeted. They like three different um, pages regarding physical fitness, working out and things like that. So this would be a very targeted audience for our ads that we could use as one of our narrower ads. So that's just one quick way to show you how you can narrow down ads if you want to use the broad to narrow strategy. You can edit this by messing with age, gender, pretty much the same thing we did during that whole live example, except you can just add in a few additional interests that you can find in from Audience Insights, and you just play around with it until you get the numbers that you want. And then obviously from broad to narrow, you would just do the math. You would start out with a bigger number, and then you would slowly go down. So you would start off with, I'd say, like, maybe an audience of 1 million, and work your way down to maybe your narrowest ad is, like, around here, like 88,000. I wouldn't go less than 50,000. So I hope these live examples have been helpful, and if you implement these ad targeting strategies to your ads, and you're willing to persist and track your results, you're going to succeed over time. It may not happen right away. You may have, you're going to have a few dud ads. Everyone does. I do. Everybody does. But the thing is, you got to be willing to persist and you got to be willing to track and see what's working and then work and expand on that. So I hope you can implement this strategy to your success and I will see you in the next section of the video. Alright, so we've made it to the last section of the course. Congratulations if you're still watching at this point, and it's a good thing that you are because this is probably the most critical part of the entire lesson. So in this section we're going to be going over custom audiences and or ad retargeting.
So if there was a secret sauce to selling on Shopify with Facebook ads, this would probably be it. I mean, it's not exactly a secret, but it's definitely one of the most important things to know. So what is ad retargeting exactly? Well, what it is, is you're retargeting people that previously took an action on your website. So say, we're targeting people that either landed on a page, added one of your items to cart, checked out, anything like that. So typically, it takes up to seven times of somebody seeing your product to actually buy it. A lot of salesmen say the fortune's in the follow-up, and that couldn't be more true. And just because this is an online store doesn't mean that you can bypass the typical rules of selling. Not everyone's going to buy the first time they see it, which is why the persistence and constant improvement and stuff like this is key. So if somebody clicks your ad and goes to your site, you know they're interested. Even if they don't buy, they were interested at the time. Many things can happen between them clicking your ad and them possibly checking out. They could have gotten distracted. The baby could be crying if they have kids. Uh, their power could have went out. Their browser could have crashed. Anything could have happened. But the thing to remember is that nobody clicks ads that they're not interested in. So what do you do from here? So you know this. You know that retargeting is important. So what do you do from here? So first off, let's go with how do I create a custom audience? Well, it's really easy. You're going to go to your Facebook. And then you're going to go to Ads Manager. You're going to click Tools, then Audiences, then Create Custom Audience. Then you're going to have three options. And you're going to click Website Traffic. And here, what this does is it will take all the people that your Facebook pixel has picked up that landed on your view content pages, and it will put them into a custom audience that you can be able to retarget your ads to. So keep in mind, every person who will see this ad you're going to create has been to your site before so this is extremely powerful you're showing ads to people that have already been to your site so you're 100 percent sure that they're already interested so you really can't get better potential buyers than this so what do you have to do differently with retargeted ads versus regular ads well you don't have to do too much different but you do want to have a different ad than what that person already saw so you want to create a unique ad for this audience you don't just want to show these people the same exact ad they already saw and you can also have a different item in the offer or you can use a different offer altogether so if you so if this audience are for people that land on your site and you've been using tripwire offers you could just have this as a regular offer just an item or maybe a 50 percent off or you can do another tripwire this is all up to you and this is all where the experimenting comes in but I would definitely recommend using a different item in the offer and making the ad completely different. And there are some unique things that you can actually do with this. You could even put something in the text of your ad like, thank you for visiting our website. And that may sound weird and maybe aggressive, but that'll really get their attention. You know, say you're just scrolling on Facebook and you see an ad that says, thank you for visiting our website. That's going to make you take a second look. And then you realize, oh, yeah, I did visit this website. And maybe that person clicks again. I mean, they're definitely more likely to click than people that are a brand new audience. I mean, nobody clicks ads that they're not interested in. So you know that the people that we're targeting now are 100% interested in what you're selling. You just have to continuously put your products in front of them until they decide to buy. Now, this is the second hidden benefit of Tripwire ads that I actually didn't mention during my content on YouTube. See, the thing with the tripwire is it will entice more clicks than a regular ad because you're saying you're giving something away. You're saying it's free, which is going to grow a custom audience faster that can then be hit with retargeted ads. So this is another advantage of the tripwire, and which is why I highly recommend doing it, because even if you're only breaking even or if you're slightly below break even, depending on what your ad budget is, depending how much of a hit you can take on this, you can always retarget that same exact audience. So if you're using the tripwire and you're optimizing for people landing on your item page, which is what I would recommend with tripwires, just optimize for people who land on your page, who click your ad, get to your website. 
and you create a custom audience off of that and create ads that retarget those same people, your odds of getting sales are going through the roof. And this is the thing that a lot of people miss. Either people give up before this point or people just don't even know to do this. But this is where the majority of your sales are going to come from. This is how you create consistent sales because you're marketing to people that you know want your products. So ideally, you're going to have to retarget multiple times. As I said, sometimes people won't buy up until the seventh time. I don't know what's so magic about the number seven, but it just seems to be like that in sales. So you're going to need to retarget multiple times. You can create multiple audiences for viewing your page, audiences for adding to cart. That could be another audience. And think about the conversion rate for an ad or the click-through rate for an ad on a audience that added to cart versus view your page because people that added to cart they were one click away from buying your item so you know like you can't get a better audience than this so, so I don't know if you're you know understanding the power in this but it's not complicated it's really simple it's just as I said people either give up before they get to this stage or people just don't know that you can do this and as I said it's as simple